Hi, this is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com, <laughs> and we are on stage here at Rock of Ages on Broadway with Joel Hoekstra and Tommy Kessler, the guitar players who play in the, in the band that goes on stage. I want to take a look at the gear, the guitars they use, how they get their sound, and what they do on a night in and night out basis. So we're going to start with Tommy. He's going to walk us through the guitars he's using. So Tommy, start uh, here with, the, with your Taylor guitars you have over here. All right, well, um, for the six string stuff, I use uh, an 810. And uh, it's just, and it has a Eller bag system in it, because this was uh, I needed to duplicate a previous guitar tone, and that's the system it had in it, so that was the easiest way to go. But other than that, just a regular 810, and uh, whoop, and that happens every night, so <laughs> and it's not a big deal. How much of the show do you do you play that on? Um, I probably play a third of the show on, on six string acoustic guitar. There's uh, more than words, high enough. Um, every rose has its thorn. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of solo, you know, you know, led by the six string acoustic guitar. So a lot of this is done on this one. And then um, over here we got one. Uh, we do uh, actually Joel does a number on this, and then I do a full number. Dead or Alive is on this one, the A54 CE. And again, just a bone, you know, normal A54. You can go right off the shelf and get one. Um, and yeah, like I said, this one's just played for one song in the whole show, and then Joel plays a half a number um, to uh, to be with you. I think it's all right to be with you, and I do Dead or Alive on it. And those are the two Taylor acoustics that we've had. And this one down here is a uh, DBZ. I'm going to try to pronounce this Calvera. Cavallo. <laughs> Sorry, Dean, but we love it. And uh, <laughs> so the uh, but you know it's in, this is the one. This is my one electric guitar I play every night. So I do the whole show. Half you know whatever. Thirds on the acoustic. The rest of the show is on this thing. So um, and again just white. It's great, you know, Dean gave us a couple of these things at the beginning of this run, and they are ruling the show in Joel and I's world. So there you go. And you're tuned to standard on everything? Yeah, everything is standard, 440. I mean, come on, it's Broadway. What, do you, you know, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> and, and what type of strings do you use on these guitars? Uh, everything we use is Ernie Ball. We use the, uh, the purple set, whatever, the 11, 11 to 49 power slinkies. Mm -hmm. And the purple package on these is the... Uh, uh, you know, I don't remember what it is, but it's a 12 to 54 set. You know, I don't remember exactly which one it is, but yeah. And then, uh, and then this is a custom gauge set. I just, just for the ease, you know, this is all about, you know, get tailors because it's easy to use. You know, they're easy, quick, and um, and so whatever they shipped with, I had Ernie Ball send me out the same exact gauges. Oh, okay. So there's no, you know, mess with the nut, tweak things, and anything like that. So yeah, then those are the gauges, and uh, yeah, just a couple of, you know, that's it. All right, so now we're here with Joel, and Joel's going to show us the guitars that he uses uh, on the show. So, Joel, why don't we start with uh, this V over here? Yeah, once again, uh, you know, I'm using all DBZs in the show as well. Um, you know, we thought they were the best representation of kind of the 80s period look with something that still sounds good and plays good. It's very difficult to find that combination in a guitar. So this first one here is a, a, another Cavallo, similar to what Tommy had. Um, just you know, kick-ass looking crazy guitar. I mean, have you ever seen a bigger headstock than that in your friggin' life? It's like Batman has come to life. Um, so anyway, that's, I start the show on that. You'll see me down in front uh, when the show begins playing a solo on that. And that's something where you want to just get basically in people's faces and kind of shock them with something really loud. And, and so that's the obvious choice for that. And then the bulk of the show, um, anything that doesn't involve a Floyd Rose, I play the DBZ Bolero. And... Um, one of the reasons I wanted to go with black is for, you know, a good chunk of the time, your your role is to settle in, in the, into the background of the show and not be, you know, detracting attention from the actors. So um, I thought that this was a really good, again, great combination of a great sounding guitar with a, just the right amount of flash, but also just the right amount of a background look. And, you know, as you know, with the theater thing, being on stage here the whole time, the, you know, the look is, it's a very important element. And in terms of choosing an instrument for the show. Right. But it sounds fantastic and uh, you know, totally reliable and durable. Um, these guitars haven't let us down one time now. We've been running with them for a year, and so that speaks volumes right there as well. Because a lot of the 80s guitars weren't put together so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, DBZ makes a totally quality guitar. We're totally uh, happy with them here. Uh, great, great combination of great look and great sound. Uh, so over here then I have the Barchetta, which, you know, obviously a huge part of the 80s thing is the whammy bar antics on my end. The, any, anything that 
basically I choose to use a Floyd Roson I use this guitar for during the show. So mm -hmm. this plays about half of the show in conjunction, the other half going to the Bolero. The, uh, the Cavallo is basically just for the opening number. Um, we're in tight quarters up here and two of us with a big V-style guitar can be a little yeah. cumbersome up here. Um, so anyway, that, you know, all these things go into making the proper choice for what to use on the show. But um, I have to say we're totally thrilled with the DBZs. They've been kicking ass for us up here. So, yeah. All right. Now, both of you have uh, used, used fractal units for your sound. And so tell us a little bit about what you have here on the floor to control and move through the sounds throughout the show each night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, basically, I have the Tech 21 MIDI mouse, which again, you know, um, the durability uh, is a huge factor in searching for the right thing, and also the fact that we have very limited deck space. We didn't want to, you know, we love the, f the, the foot switches for the fractal units themselves, but to put that up on this deck, it limits our, our stage movement, and it's also more things that can go wrong. Uh, when you're on a show like this where you're up on deck the whole time, the worst thing that can happen is something going wrong because you're up here trying to fix it in front of everybody. Um, so basically, you can see that we, we really limit in terms of what we use. We have a backup MIDI cable waiting for us if there's a problem with that. And uh, the Tech 21 has been fantastic for us. I basically scroll through and advance through my show. The way I wrote it is it goes patches 50 through 121. So, you know, you just scroll up or down using those buttons. This could take you, you know, faster. I don't use that function at all during the show. Um, it's just kind of forward. I go, you know, like I said, I have about 71, 72 patches in a row, but they're all very similar. This isn't like, you know, I'm not uh, going wild with tones on this gig. It's like straight up, you know, distortion or clean and, you know, different delays, a phaser here or there. It's more or less like having the right amount of delay or reverb for each patch. Um, Cause again, it, it avoided having a, the need for an expression pedal. Um, basically, we're down to just using Ernie Ball volume pedals, which serve us very well up here, um, very durable. Um, I just, you know, have been using them my whole career. So um, in addition to their strings, I'm a big fan of their volume pedals, and uh, it's just what I'm comfortable with. And the sounds on your that you've set up, the 70 or so sounds, those necessarily aren't 70 different sounds. There's, there's a lot of... There's a lot Some of yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. In, in general, um, you know, the model I used off the, the fractals, the EVH uh, rhythm tone and lead tone. Uh, but, you know, there's certain leads where I'll try, you know, I'll do like a high pass filter or something like that to sound like a, a wah halfway down or whatever. So the solo cuts a little more. Like, real subtle stuff, but basically we're recreating the 80s stuff. So it's not a lot of like, you know, we're not, we're not trying to play a lot of textural things in this gig. You know, yeah, and, and basically uh, I, I use the FS5U for tap tempo on the delays on the fractal, and, and that's it. And Tommy, tell us, uh, you use pretty much the same type of rig, but use it in a little different way. Tell us a little bit about how you use it. Yeah, I just use um, yeah the same exact rig, just minus the volume pedal and the uh, tap tempo feature. Uh, mine's just the meat, mine is bare bones, meat and potatoes. The, uh, I only have, Joel has, what, 71, 72 patches? I have six. I literally just have, you know, it's literally set up just like a like an amp. Channel one is clean, channel two is dirty, channel three is heavier, and then I have three variable patches with some delay, you know, chorus and stuff like that on the clean stuff. Um, but that's it. And so I, 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 there's a few times where I use that feature that Joel was talking about, like you know, where I need to go from like, you know, the heavy, or I'm sorry, I'd be on clean right now, and then I need to prep the the distortion to hit right on a, you know, on a beat, and so I'm. I prep mine a little more, whereas Joel's is chromatic. Like it's you know next patch, next sound. You mean chronologic? Or chromatic? Chromatic. Okay, well, I like sure. chromatic. It's you a musical like chromatic? term. Chromatic. Okay, we'll stick with musical chromatic. Musical term. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, but that's yeah. Mine is is as simple as it, you know. There's nothing, nothing thought through about, about mine. And I I only have uh, six patches. So. All right, Joel and Tommy, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, and good luck on the show tonight. Thanks. Thank Everybody, come out and see Rock of Ages. <laughs> This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.